Writing in blue. What is it writing in blue say? South Pole. South Pole. This research that's going on behind the scenes, um, but most often that just doesn't happen. For a lot of people, they like to see something that really teaches them something about the environment. Visitors do come thinking that they're going to simply be entertained, so they do come up and say, wow, I never thought about the park that way. I had no idea that research happened at national parks. Rain mud was great, and at first I didn't know what I was looking at because I was not a paleoecologist yet. The, the person who took us in the field was like, that's the Ice Age. earlier, how do you think scientists are going to utilize this lake and pond in order to study Acadia's ecological past? And you hit it right on the head. You do that by doing core samples. That's basically like when you stick a straw into your water cup mm -hmm. and you pull it up. Have you ever done that? And then there's water stuck yeah. inside of your straw. Yeah. And so that's exactly what these scientists are doing in the ground. So we could learn when the first Native Americans came to a place, couldn't we? Because we could see where, how deep down the charcoal was. Yes. And then where it was, and then we could figure out where and how long ago they were living. Yeah, absolutely. You're thinking like a scientist now. I don't know that they know what they're getting into when they start with the hike. They just say, okay, a ranger's going to take us up and talk at us because that's what we've taught them. That's what we've taught them over a hundred years. We need to start embracing technology, not to the exclusion of good interpretation, but to enhance good interpretation. People are really appreciative of the iPad graphics. Oh, wow. That thing's I think the yes. most impressive things are things that they can see. I ask people, you know, what can you extrapolate from this data just by looking at it without me telling you about it? And they're able to get it. Yeah, so when the glacier wow. was here, it was like a mile, two, three miles over our head of ice. But over time, it got warmer, right? And it started... I see there's a glacier there and it's starting to melt. And it got buried. Well, yeah. Right, well, I've been noticing all of these spruce trees. I want to be the spark that lights the fire, you know? I want to be the spark that uh, they then go and find a geology book and start reading about it. And how come the trees are not that tall? Jerry noticed that the trees were not that tall. We are very impressed with the rangers. Our grandchildren are meeting, kind of versus the ones our children did. Not that they were bad, but they have new programs now and it's much more interactive. And uh, they learn a lot. So one flower, like a rose, might have this pollen, and then a dandelion might have this pollen. To understand a researcher's story gives you a buy-in. It gives you a human face to something that may seem very abstract. When you're thinking about the Park Service, our mission is to um, preserve and protect for ourselves and for future generations. And so that future generation, you need to get them engaged and you need to get them interested when they are, when they're young. And so it's exciting to have cool science to talk about. And so you can really see that buy-in just over time. They walk around in a way that's respectful of the world around them. And that's, that's all we want, is to give them the chance to be stewards because they're the future. So at this point, we have seen dozens of interactions, right? So what are we getting out of all of that? We can say, look, there's science learning that's happening. There's an increased awareness of the role that our public lands play. They're getting it. What science tells us that allows us then to make intelligent decisions or choices. 
we're on the right track here at the National Park to be able to use this science to make our educated guesses. But what it ultimately comes down to is all of us. We should know what scientists are doing. Maybe you will become a scientist one day. Science doesn't have to be stale. It's gripping in a lot of ways, especially when you're looking at questions that you don't know the answer to, and you may never know the answer to. Involving people in those questions and in those mysteries or those aha moments is entertaining. It's a true scientific I'm curious how the whole parts are like this. We got to see outstanding examples of Ice Whoop at Acadia. Some amazing work is also going on at other parks that have participated in Ice Whoop, at Joshua Tree, Indiana Dunes, Carlsbad Caverns. And we want more and more of it, wherever it's possible, to grab onto those experiences, the moments in the parks that spark those interests, that become irresistible to most visitors.